Well, this is definitely like the good old days. <laughs> I reread my remarks five times, so I'm going to get, get down to it and just go to the point. Um, just a point of information, Julia and Don, you're not allowed to answer questions unless you're asked to. So let's keep that in mind next time around. Uh, the, the, budgetary, the budgetary process, and I'll be the first to admit, for a school district is excruciating. Uh, most people don't realize that uh, funding sources come from a number of different accounts, accounts in this district and also accounts in the state. So it is a very excruciating problem that you have to deal with every single year. The unfortunate thing is, for the last five or six years, we have the same problems. And the problems are not changing. The only way you will be, ever be able to change this budgetary process is to make a, make a decision as a group to begin to tackle next year's budget the day after you approve this year's budget. Because nothing will ever change. The, the thing that I, I find really disturbing in, uh, in the cuts that you're going to make is that it, it's almost like some of these pots are the same old scapegoats. You know, how long are we going to put off doing justice for the special ed children? I mean, that is a lot of that stuff is Other things, other things that you look at in here, um, I've had the opportunity recently to do a um, uh, help out in my, my grandson's kindergarten. And uh, there are 18 children in that kindergarten class. And to be very honest with you, uh, as school board members, you've got the opportunity to go sit in on a class, and if you think 20 is a problem, you have not seen anything until you see 30. Because these little buggers, these little buggers have an attention span shorter than mine. <laughs> um, the other thing I always find very, very disturbing is, uh, is when you do have gifted, gifted children in this school district, and their parents have not decided to go to private education, you still owe it to them because they pay the same taxes that every one of the little does. So that's, uh, that becomes a scapegoat. Um, rather than go back through much of what's been said tonight, I'd like to remind each and every one of you of the one campaign promise you all had in common. And that campaign promise was children first. What happens all too often in this school district is the school district lacks leadership. Now, you know I've spoke to almost every one of you in the last five years. You cannot have a district run smoothly unless you have clear-cut, definable, specific goals for the administration. It is unconscionable to give a person, even if it's a contractual relationship, give a person a raise for satisfactory performance. Because in this day and age, in this day and age, satisfactory doesn't cut it anymore. It just does not cut it. Now, the thing I'd like to, to talk to you about is leadership. And I'm sorry that Dr. Sheena has left, uh, left the room. But I want to, I want to relay, I want to relay a conversation I had with a, a classified employee about six years ago. And this particular employee, uh, his particular department has been cut many times. I know for a fact that this, uh, this individual, although he was entitled to an administrative raise, cut his raise. That's leadership. Now, Julie, I hope you get this right in minutes. But if this district is ever going to turn around, you need leadership. And the leadership comes by an individual that is willing to suck it up and make the right decisions. So I would strongly encourage you to go back to the drawing board. There are many budgets, there are many ledgers in this, in this particular budget itself. They can still be cut. But it is unconscionable to do the cuts you want to cut when your administrative staff is overplanned. Thank you.